Welcome to this Excel video. Today's video is going to be in more than one part, but the initial part won't be very long. It's really trying to illustrate a concept that I've been thinking about for a while, but I haven't done anything about. And that is to extend the concept from video number 32, where we used a particular feature of the Paste Special dialog box to allow us to paste a linked picture of a chart. Now what we see on this page is a, I've just called it a dashboard, where you are able to build the report that is most suitable for your athlete using drop down boxes. So if I go to any of these orange boxes, I can choose any measure I like. And the graph will change. Now on its own that's not particularly flash because you can do that reasonably easily with some dynamic ranges. But what's pretty cool is that uh, I can say, you know what, this whole thing here is a, is a part of my dashboard but I don't want it there. I want that there instead. And instead of having the body composition be a big part, I want it to be a smaller part. And I don't like the full chart, I want the composite chart instead. And so all of these are not charts at all. They are linked images from charts that are on the analysis and workings page. So on this workings page are a whole bunch of charts and something that's not actually a chart at all, which is a combination of cells with a chart underneath it. So and across to the right as well as um, our two spider charts. That's going to be a subsequent video when we look at those, but at the moment really what I'm trying to illustrate is that each of these are just regular charts and you can edit them and so on as normal. Regular in that there's nothing special other than that they are dynamically linked to this data table. But Video 32 explained the process behind taking a chart that sits somewhere else and using a linked picture. And so I'm going to show you that now. So in behind the sum of eight skin folds are a bunch of cells, and I've been quite careful, not super careful because I'm a bloke, um, but a little bit careful, um, to make sure that the borders of this chart are immediately on the margins of cells. And so if I select cell I-56, now I've select all of the cells directly underneath this chart, and I've named those cells, pick chart 2. And I've done it for all of these other ones as well. I think this one is number 16. It is. So pick chart 16 happens to be a um, horizontal bar chart, whereas some of the other ones look slightly different. That doesn't have to matter. What I'm going to do is copy. Now I'm going to paste a linked picture. So this linked picture is pretty useful little tool. It is just a picture. There's no ability to select components of the chart and edit the legend or anything like that, but um, maybe that's okay. Maybe that's good. Maybe you don't want the coaches to do any editing. What you can do, though, is do all sorts of interesting things with the fact that this picture is now linked directly to the chart. So in the formula bar, you will see that there is a cell reference. That cell reference is the cells directly under the original chart or the source data. So instead of that cell reference, I'm going to use a named range that I've already written. There it is. So I've created seven variables called chart selector one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And why that changed to our body composition image, which is here is that chart selector number three refers to 
this drop down box. So if I change this drop down box to back squat, when we go back to where we were a second ago, it'll be back squat. So it's a linked picture based upon the selection made in that drop down box. As I've said already, all of this information was talked about in the video number 32. But I'll quickly walk you through it. Just get rid of that. So the first thing I did was to create a list of tests that I wanted to have in the drop downs. And these are really um, names of charts. So if I pick mass or LMI, that's the chart that appears. So this particular range is called list of selected headings. I'm not sure why I use that name, but uh, um, that's what populates this drop down box. So I've now got a drop down box. And in conjunction with cell B5 on the dashboard page, I wrote a little formula that basically said, well, what number in the list is the option selected? So dashboard B5, whereabouts does it fit? It is the ninth item on the list. So this number here, 9, can then drive one final formula that will determine which picture gets used. In the name manager, what we see here, it's quite a long formula, but it's, it's by no means complex. Basically what it says is that the choose function will determine which picture is, is chosen, which is quite a relevant uh, semantics there. So whatever is in analysis and working C6, which is selection one right there, tells us whether to do pick one, pick two, pick three, da 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 da, da up to pick 16. And so obviously it's going to choose picture nine. Selection two will do picture 14 and so on and so on. And so this choose function is inside the name manager and the name is chart selector one. So that's why if you click on any of these charts in the dashboard, it'll say chart selector one, chart selector two, chart selector three, chart selector four and five and so on. Now what I like about this concept is that you can have a little bit of fun and get quite specific with the type of report or visual presentation that you give to a given athlete based upon possibly their position or physical qualities or well, sometimes it might be through what are the um, learning styles of the coach and how do they best like to look at data so you've got uh, a mixture of bars and columns and radars and and, and stuff like that on this particular one or you might actually find that you know what this particular person likes a, a bit of data in a table as well so it doesn't just have to be a chart it could be a um, I guess just a little panel of information which includes in this case a chart and some boxes with some uh, um, indications as to whether it's been up or down since the last test so so anyhow um, the report builder, an extension of video number 32.